Let's walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by reviewing the overall structure and in particular starting with the code running on the RT target. Here we have the function create network stream writer endpoint. And in particular, we need a name for the writer and then the data type. Data type can be established by wiring a constant of the appropriate data type, in this case, U32. We also need to set the writer buffer size, and that is established by this network published shared variable. I'm going with the default timeout of negative one, and that means that this function blocks until the PC host creates a reader for this writer endpoint. So the basic idea is we wait for the PC to establish the other end of this network stream. In a similar way, we create a reader endpoint, and this is for obtaining information from the PC. Now that the pair of endpoints has been created, we pass those references into the main processing loop. And in fact, as far as the RT is concerned, there's no processing, but really just handing off between the FPGA and the PC. So it reads audio from the FPGA and writes it directly to the PC. And then at the same time, it is reading processed audio from the PC and then directly writing that to the FPGA. The non-zero timeout values prevent these functions from blocking when the PC side is unresponsive for whatever reason. The loop stops on either an error condition or when the network published shared variable is set to true and a little bit of cleanup here at the end. The flush stream function ensures that the very last frame is sent from the RT up to the PC, and then the endpoints are destroyed. Now let's turn our attention to the code that runs on the PC host. We begin by creating the endpoints on the PC side. So we need a writer and a reader. We need to refer to the name of the endpoint that was created on the RT target. We do that by bundling the IP address together with the name. The endpoint name must match what we find on the RT side. We also give a name to the host side, so that's the host writer. Here's our data type specification, as we discussed earlier, and the buffer size is set by the PC and, and establishes this side of the endpoint and we also use a network published variable to communicate that down to the RT. We wait for up to 10 seconds for the RT target to establish its endpoints. Inside of our processing loop, we read the audio frame from the RT target. This is an array that we can uh, process, in this case, a very simple uh, application of a gain factor, but you can replace this with whatever processing you would like. The processed audio frame is then sent back down to the RT target. After this loop ends, we wait for 500 milliseconds for the RT to destroy its network stream endpoints. Let's wrap up by locating where the various functions may be found in the sub palettes. I'm on the PC side right now, looking under data communication, we have network streams. Here we have the create writer. We have the functions for reading and writing multiple elements at a time. Here we see flush stream and then destroy the stream endpoints.